In this video, Dr. Jordan Peterson explains how people experience the world based on their personalities. Well, the structural elements of personality might be regarded as the implicit structures that govern your perception and that tilt you towards certain kinds of behaviors. I, I can give you some examples. We, we can talk about the Big Five model just briefly. The Big Five personality model is a statistical model which we'll cover in detail, trait by trait, part, dur partly during the second half of the course. The way that the Big Five was generated was that it's been generated over about 50 years that personality psychologists gathered together adjectives within the English language first that were used to describe human beings as many adjectives as they could collect and then subjected them to a process called factor analysis and what factor analysis does is enable you statistically to determine in some sense how similar adjectives are to one another so for example if you gave a thousand people a list of adjectives to describe themselves with and one of the adjectives was happy and another of the adjectives was social you'd find that those who rated themselves high on happy would also rate themselves high on social and those who rated themselves low on happy would also rate themselves low on social and by looking at those patterns of covariation you can determine what the essential dimensions are of human personality one of the dimensions is roughly happiness that's extroversion another dimension is neuroticism it's a negative emotion dimension so if you ask someone if they're anxious and they score high say on a scale of one to seven they're also likely to score high on another item that says that they're sad and it turns out that negative emotions clump together and so that people who experience more of one negative emotion have a propensity to experience more of all of them there's another dimension called agreeableness and agreeable people are self-sacrificing compassionate and polite if you're dealing with an agreeable person they don't like conflict they care for other people um, if you're dealing with an agreeable person they're likely to put your concerns ahead of theirs they're non-competitive and cooperative uh, it's a dimension where women are women score more highly than men on agreeableness across cultures including those cultures where the largest steps have been taken towards producing an egalitarian social circumstance like Scandinavia actually the gender differences in personality there are larger than they are anywhere else um, another trait is conscientiousness conscientiousness is an excellent trait if you want to do well in in school and in work especially if you're a manager and administrator I can't say we understand a lot about conscientiousness although it it reliably emerges from factor analytic studies of adjective groups across different countries conscientious people are diligent, industrious and orderly their orderliness tilts them towards political conservatism by the way because it turns out that your inbuilt temperament, your inbuilt personality which constitutes a set of filters through which you view the world also alters the manner in which you process information and influences the way that you vote and so you might say and I, I do believe that this is true our, we've been doing a lot of research on this as of late the more accurate a measure you take of someone's political beliefs the more you find that personality is what's predicting them and I, I think that's a reasonable thing to think about because you know you have to you have to figure out ways of simplifying the world right because you just can't do everything and so people are specialized, they have specialized niches that they occupy you can think about them as social niches like a niche is a place where your particular skills would serve to maintain you and so if you're extroverted you're going to look for a social niche because you like to be around people and if you're introverted you're going to spend much more time on your own and so if you're an introverted person for example you're going to want a job where you're not selling and where you're not surrounded by groups of people who are making social demands on you all the time because it'll wear you out whereas if you're extroverted that's just exactly what you want and so the extrovert sees the world as a place of social opportunity and the introvert sees the world as a place to 
retreat from and spend time alone and it turns out that both of those modes of being are valid the, the issue, at least to some degree, is whether or not you're fortunate enough to match your temperament with the demands of the environment and I suppose also whether you're fortunate enough, fortunate enough so that you're born in an era where there actually is a niche for your particular temperament because it isn't necessarily the case that that will be the case imagine that all of these temperamental dimensions vary because of evolutionary pressure right, so there's a distribution of extroversion a normal distribution, most people are somewhere in the middle and then as you go out towards the extremes there are fewer and fewer people and what that means is that on average across large spans of time there have been environments that match every single position on that distribution with most, most of the environments matching the center because otherwise we wouldn't have evolved that way and so sometimes being really extroverted is going to work well for you in a minority of environments, a minority of niches and sometimes it's just going to be a catastrophe I suspect, for example, that if you live in a tyrannical society where any sign of, 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 of personally oriented activity is likely to get you in trouble that being extroverted and low in neuroticism wouldn't be a very good idea because you're going to be mouthy and happy and saying a lot of things, unable to keep your thoughts to yourself and you're going to be relatively fearless now, I don't know that for sure, because we haven't done the studies that precisely match temperamental proclivity to environmental demand, but you get what I mean so, conscientious people, anyways, conscientious people are industrious and orderly, we know a little bit about orderliness it seems to be associated, strangely enough, with disgust sensitivity, which I suppose isn't that su surprising, you know, if you take an orderly person and you put them in a messy kitchen, they respond with disgust and want nothing more than to straighten it all out and organize it and clean it and there's tremendous variability in orderliness um, and as I said, orderliness predicts political conservatism, it's not the only thing, but it's certainly one of the things um, Thanks for watching.